Creating Hyper-V Virtual Machines. In order to create virtual machines, we need to go to Hyper-V. And as you can see right now in Hyper-V Manager, I can right click over here and say new virtual machine or from here, it's the same thing. And this box will begin. And to create a virtual machines, next. Virtual machine name, I would like to say server three. And I will not select this option because I will like this virtual machine to store at the default location, which I have already set in previous video. Um, next, generation one or generation two. Generation one VMs, again, the type VHD, the hard drive file name is VHD and it supports legacy OS and legacy hardware and supports 32 and 64 bit operating system. And let's say legacy hardware, which was available in previous version of Hyper-V. Gen 2, this is option I will go for. It supports for newer virtualization feature and supports only 64 bit OS and newer hardware. And again, once you create a VM, you can change its generation. Remember that? A startup memory, I would like to give one gig, it's fine. And I like to enable dynamic memory. And I will like to connect to virtual switch. And this is the name of the virtual machine hard disk, which is server3.vhdx. And location, uh, just give me a second, did I? Yeah, sorry. I would like to change the location, sorry. Uh, what's the, yeah. Oh. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, and size 40 gigs is enough and next and i would like to install an operating system from a bootable image i have on e drive an iso folder and here i have 2012 r2 iso when I do that, it will automatically create a CD drive, virtual CD drive for the VM and mount that uh, ISO in that, in that CD and change the boot order. And next. And the VM is there. Right now it's blank VM. If I go to the settings and the memory, remember I choose um, dynamic memory so as dynamic memory minimum ram is 512 and the maximum is this much now i would like maximum to be just two gigs so it means that this vm can use memory as minimum as 512 mb and as much as two gig depends on the workload Minimum is 512, five startup is 1024, and then it will t automatically take care of take care of it. So I'll say apply. I would say okay. One thing I would like to check though. Ah, maybe I cancel those settings. That's why. Uh, so let me just go back to change the default location for virtual hard disk drive. That's what I was wondering, that, that I have changed those settings, then why it's showing me the default path. I think when I change those settings, I click cancel, not okay. So E, VMs, VMs. I made those changes in one of the previous videos, so that's all right. Um, I did nothing else I did change, so apply, okay. All right, so let's start this VM. And I connect to it. And 
looks like it meets that prompt yeah and here installation is started and once installation will finish uh, hyperview will automatically install integrated services which is equivalent to vmware vmware tools that you install in the guest vm so integration services will be installed inside this guest vm and this vm will be ready to use so this installation is similar exactly the same like installing windows server 2012 r2 nothing fancy so i think it will be a waste of time for you if you just look to the to, to the entire process so as you can see it's as as simple as installing server so what i will do i will pause the video and i will be back once the installation is done okay as you can see uh, installation is completed and this is server 3 on Hyper-V and I'm inside the server. This server, as I said, it's connected to a virtual suite, which, of, which is type external, so it's accessible to the network. For example, if I go to CMD and ping my domain controller, which is 203.200, and you can get it back. So virtual machine is installed, integration services are installed. If I go to the settings, I can see these are the virtual machines, hardware, boot sequence, as you can see, secure boot option is disabled because that's, that's some special setups required. Uh, dynamic memory, as I said, it's enabled. Good thing about dynamic memory that it automatically takes care of these values. So minimum RAM will be 512 MB, maximum 2 gig, and it will be the value will be keep changing depends on the usage. And by default, 20% of memory deserves as a buffer, and it can be increased and decreased. But as you can see, the RAM value cannot be changed while the VM is running. I can change although the dynamic memory but not the, uh, I can change the dynamic memory values. So that, that will do that difference. Processor, although it's not changeable, not hot add, but I can change few other values like virtual machine reserves and the limits. Uh, hard drive, as you can see, it's uses SCSI controller and hard drive is right over there. Browse button will take me to the folder where the, the hard drive it's, it's stored. And as you can see, it's VHDX because it's Gen 2. Uh, inspect option will check disk for any error or issues. Uh, it's not a very you know uh, low level operation i will explain this later um, but we will talk more about it edit option it allows you to create different open to take different actions against this vhd for example you know you can create a differencing disk which as you know that that will be that will serve as say you know like a parent child relationship and virtual disk which are associated with checkpoints or virtual disk you can edit with the application enabled for example if i go next right now at the moment the only option available is expand so if i want to increase the capacity of this hard drive i can do that so it was 40 so let's say i make it 41 so next finish so I change the size of the disk by using edit option so if I go inside my system inside the virtual machine
I'll still see 39.4 because the other one gig will appear as unallocated disk space. So here, if I go to disk management, and as you can see, it's yeah, one gig unallocated. So I can select C and like any server or any operation, you know, whether it's a physical server or a virtual server, I can extend the size. So after extending the size in Hyper-V, I need to extend inside the guest operating system as well. Same you do in VMware as well. Uh, another thing, server three, it's the name which it's inside the Hyper-V Manager. The virtual machine name is not by default server 3. When I did the installation, you know this default name appears. So you have to change the name here. Same thing you do with virtual or with VMware as well, uh, unless you're using guest customization, which is another thing. So that's pretty much it. And this VM is ready to use. You can install any roles, any features you want, and you can use the file server, domain controller, or any other thing. If you want to do nested virtualization, then we have to do a few things that we have to make sure that we should not use dynamic memory. We uh, should not use checkpoints, which I will cover later that what checkpoints are. Checkpoints are basically snapshots. And we need to set the VM processor to allow nested virtualization. Then this VM can also work as a Hyper-V host. The guest VM can also be a Hyper-V host. So that's it for this video. And uh, sorry, that's it for this video. And I will cover later. Uh, I'll see you in another video. Thanks.